for a lot of reasons. Um, she's an inspiration to so many of us here and has been a steadfast force in our lives. So thanks for letting us do that. The three of us together call ourselves the bosom. <laughs> I shouldn't say this. I'm going to take my cue. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the bosom buddy breakfast babes. And there's a story to that. So in a little levity, because we cover so many things that are difficult. Um, there was a time that Marilyn was going to uh, visit a death row inmate, as you all know, Robert Williams. And at one of her first visits, they told her that she couldn't visit him because she wasn't wearing appropriate upper underwear. And Peg generously offered her generous one to Marilyn. <laughs> and so they became the first bosom buddies, and then they jumped me in later. And the reason that came about was because of some evening, very hot evening in Peg's house as we're watching some election results come in, and I was going through some horrible hot flashes, and I don't know if any women in here can identify with that, where you are uh, dying. And uh, so Peg, because she's a gracious woman, said, we'll all take our shirts off with you. <laughs> Thank you. So I want you to know how these very classy women allowed me the, the earthiest one of the group. <laughs> uh, you'd have to be there too. That they have allowed me to be part of their group, I much appreciate. Um, but we are here to honor Peg, so I want you to give a glimpse of who she is. As far as her work, we all know of her work. And just to make a short list of some things that stood out to me was the interfaith dialogues that she organized between churches before that that was even thought of to try to bring Jews and Christians together in the same place as well as different denominations together to talk about issues of peace and war and what it meant to be Christian with a social conscience. And that was Peg that brought that together and that continues to this day. Her work against the death penalty, her work against war, her work for nuclear weapons, arms reductions treaties. But it's not just the work that she's done, and those, that list could go on. It's not just the work that she's done, it's the way she does it. That is, uh, her strategies. <laughs> and her strategies are creative, they are persistent, they are kind and playful, very classy. And I'm gonna ask Marilyn to describe two of those strategies. Peg, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> one of the things we know about Peg is her persistence. So for example, one time when she had a shoulder that was bothering her badly, she went to her doctor and wanted to see him and the receptionist said, oh, I'm so sorry. He's built up today. He's just full up. You'll have to come back tomorrow. <coughs> and Peg, with her usual graciousness, turned and went and sat down and said, I'll wait. <laughs> and guess who saw the doctor that day? <laughs> but another one, another one of my favorite stories is when Peg was very concerned during the first Gulf War, I think it was. She was not hearing enough from the pastors in their pulpits on Sunday about being against war. And she couldn't figure out how to get the message across because she said every time she would start to say something to a priest face to face, he would sort of look past her to the people on the other side. So how was she going to do this? Well, knowing Peg Gallagher, she's, she's not somebody that you can stop. So she devised a strategy just fine. She went to confession every week. <laughs> to a different priest and confessed how angry she gets when priests do not talk about being against a war. <laughs> anyway, we all know that it takes more than five minutes to um, honor this woman appropriately. So, 
Uh, we know of all the fighting that she does, but I think it's good to know some of the humanness of this woman as well. One more story, and we'll stop. And Peg's always has this very kindness. Her persistence, I'm sure her children would probably assert um, that Peg doesn't take no for an answer. She will, she will put herself in front of whoever she needs to put herself in front of to get hurt, whether it's a sen uh, Senator Nelson or anyone else, if she has to sneak in someplace to unload a flag out of her blouse. Now, I'm always getting back to that subject, I don't know. Anyway, she has to unfurl a, a flag protesting when, when it's not allowed, or even when being arrested, to thank the officers who have arrested her for their kindnesses. So her classiness is, um, and her grace, while she is persistent, is truly an inspiration. So, Peg, I wanted to say whether or not you are being arrested or being arresting, you are one of a kind, and you're ours, and we are truly blessed by you. So thank you. Well, I didn't know all you were going to learn now. 